Namaste and good morning. What a wonderful day. What a momentous occasion. What a history making moment. And I am so honored to be here to kick this event off by introducing two very important parties in this process. The first uh, party that I would like to introduce is the Bloomberg Harvard Collaborative, of which I'm honored to be a member. And so many of our members are here, probably standing behind me. And as I call their name and affiliations, they will wave. Dr. Alex Harris, Performing Artist President of ACT. Alex Nicholas, President of the Campbell Park Neighborhood Association. Barbara Vogel-Weed, The Edge District. Dr. LaDonna Butler, The Well for Life Mental Health. I am Gwendolyn Reese, President of the African American Heritage Association. Jason Mathis with the Downtown Partnership. Bridget Heller with Shirley Proctor Puller Foundation. Dr. Cynthia Johnson, Pinellas County Economic Development Director. Yes, and we are so proud of her and so happy uh, that she is now in that position. Sharon Wright, Director of Sustainability, and last but definitely not least, Nikki Gaskin Capehart, Director of Urban Affairs. This collaborative has been working together since the winter of 2019. Early in 2019, our mayor was one of 40 mayors and cities globally selected by Bloomberg Harvard to be a part of a cross-cultural collaboration. Each mayor had to select a project, a problem in their city. Our mayor chose as his project the redevelopment of Tropicana Field because he wanted to ensure that those who were most impacted by the building or, of, uh, or the erection of the, the dome would be heard, would be actively engaged in the process. We've been working since the winter of 2019 and we wanted to make sure, and one of our members, Alex Nicholas, said one day in our meeting, we need to make sure that people's voices are heard and that they know they matter. And from that day forth, we became Voices Heard, Voices Matters, Bloomberg Harvard Initiative. So now the most important role I have today is to introduce our mayor. You know, there's a saying, if not you, then who? If not now, then when? Mayor Christman heard that clarion call and he said, it's me, Rick Christman, and the time is now. And so in his eight years of service to our community, to a city that he loves and has dedicated his energy and service to, he has done something that no mayor before him has ever done. He has done something that many mayors throughout cities in this country have never even attempted. I venture to say that Mayor Christman has more women and women of color in his administration than any of his predecessors. Under Mayor Christman's administration, St. Petersburg has been noted as a city of love, a city of compassion. The uh, resolution declaring racism a public health crisis was passed and approved with recommendations. Mayor Christman's administration commissioned a study of structural racism in St. Petersburg. This Mayor Kreisman has done more than anyone that I know in advancing racial equity in this city. And Tropicana Field redevelopment is just one of those things that's included in his work in advancing race equity. He has put St. Petersburg at the forefront of the nation. He has made us indeed a city to watch a city to follow, and he has set the bar, a very high bar, for those who come after him. It is my pleasure to introduce a man that I have grown to respect and appreciate 
and in a very special way love over the past four years that I have been working with him. And this is the last time that I will be able to say publicly, I now introduce you to my mayor, your mayor, our mayor, Mayor Rick Christman. Wow. <clears throat> thank you, Gwen. And uh, I also want to say thank you to the Voices Heard, Voices Matter, Bloomberg Harvard team for all of your hard work, and I know the work you, you will continue to do. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to Campbell Park. This is certainly a very good morning. The sun is shining on St. Pete today, on the people of our community, this community, and on the future of the site that is behind me. Now, earlier this year, following more than five years, five years of public engagement, visioning and master planning, more public engagement, economic studies, more public engagement, culminating in the creation of an ambitious and audacious request for proposals and the receipt of seven proposals to redevelop this site, I narrowed the field of potential developers down to two outstanding developers. And today, in order to conclude this particular step in the redevelopment process, I am narrowing it down to one. So please join me in co congratulating Alex Videa and the team at Midtown Development. Now I'll bring Alex up here in just a moment. But first, I want to thank those that are standing with me today, those that are watching our City Development Administrator, Alan Delisle, and his team, and really everyone who has added their voice and has been a part of this extensive process. And this has been a true community endeavor. And if done right, will continue to be a community endeavor for many, many years. It's really an illustration of what St. Petersburg is all about. We are a people-powered city. And this site that is behind me, as evidenced by the 21 guiding principles that Midtown Development has committed to satisfying, will be powered by the people of St. Petersburg. Now, I chose this development company, Midtown Development, for many reasons. When I compared the two finalists side by side, they had the best proposal. And equally important, they have the resources to get this done. But of greatest importance to me, they were in, undaunted by the guiding principles. They understand the collaborative nature of this partnership with our citizens, with the city of St. Petersburg, and perhaps with the Tampa Bay Rays. They understand the need to honor the site's history and provide real opportunities. Now, there's a reason why the president of the Pinellas County Urban League, Reverend Watson Haynes, is standing here. And not just because I gave him a key to the city this morning. <laughs> Watson grew up in the neighborhood behind me. You know how we say privileged people are born on third base? Well, Watson wasn't born into privilege, but he literally grew up where third base is inside that dome. And like Miss Gwen, he knows the history here. He knows where we've been, and he knows where we need to go. Much like the vision statement we crafted eight years ago says, we will honor our past while we pursue our future. That future includes a development that provides jobs, mixed income housing, office space, entertainment, an emphasis on the creek, the natural environment, and the Pinellas Trail. Alex and Midtown Development understand this. They understand that public space cannot be an afterthought. They understand our Grow Smarter Economic Development Strategy, the business sectors that we've targeted and the need for this site to be a model of sustainability, resilience, and health. They understand, and this is the most important to me, that the site behind me must connect to where we are standing today in South St. Petersburg. And that connection must be physical, emotional, and economical. We are a city focused on removing barriers and tearing down walls the invisible ones that limit some residents' opportunities, and the literal ones like this one that stand between us and the transformation that will unfold on that site. Both block our fabled sunshine on too many and have for far too long. We have done much these past eight years to achieve our goal to create a more equitable St. Pete, but there remains much work 
to do. And that means moving forward with the process to redevelop the Tropicana Field site, with or without a baseball stadium. And the Tampa Bay Rays will help solve that outstanding question. Now, at this point, I'd like to ask Alex uh, to say a few words. Uh, Alex built a neighborhood in Miami, an inclusive, active neighborhood with a real sense of place. And Deputy Mayor Tomlin, uh, Alan Delisle, and I saw the Midtown project up close, and it is impressive. And I have to add, as mayor, I get to meet a lot of developers, and I can tell you that Alex is different. He's passionate about this project and about this city. And that passion will shine through as this site comes together. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to Alex for a few comments. Uh, thank you, Mayor. It's, it's really, we're very honored with this opportunity. Um, quite the process when we heard there, you know, city and staff wants, you know, to accomplish a couple of things on the side. When we heard there was 21, we were a little bit blown back, but um, it, it really, uh, it really boils down that what um, now now the real work starts. What we're trying to what we're is we're trying to accomplish is and we will accomplish is turn this from a project to a neighborhood, um, a neighborhood that's filled with opportunity, um, life, and diversity. I think we take one of the thing that we take the most pride of is not where we don't do projects and we do neighborhoods and one at a time and you don't know where the neighborhood starts or where it ends um, so we're, we're very honored I want to take the opportunity to thank um, Reverend Watson Haynes I know for a fact I, I, I wouldn't be up here nor my team would be up here if it wasn't for him and his staff and the and the and the trust that he puts um, in us we, we're very appreciative and honored that means the world to us um, I'll let him come up here and say a couple words in a second. Um, we look forward to working with everyone as in the community, with the Rays, with anyone that wants to be a part of this amazing process. And we look forward to working, obviously, with the new mayor and their staff. Thank you. Um, let the Reverend come up here for a second. First of all, I want to thank the mayor uh, for his confidence in this team. Uh, certainly, um, they went through what I refer to as the most um, dangerous interrogation that you could ever go through, uh, meeting with the Urban League to talk about what you want to do. And um, thanks to Charlotte, who's our Chief Operating Officer for the Urban League, uh, who actually sat there and asked them a whole bunch of questions, and I was like, I wouldn't ask that question. <laughs> but she kept asking and kept asking. She said, I, I want to know if you really want to do what you want to do with all honesty and sincerity. And uh, we had talked to a couple of other groups. Uh, and near the end of the meeting, she said, this is the group that we need to align ourselves with. They have the wherewithal to make this project, and they have the uh, backgrounds. Uh, I want to thank them for putting their confidence in the Urban League uh, because, you know, they could have come and to this town, met with any of the other groups, any of other, other people, uh, but they felt it very important uh, that somebody said, go talk to the Urban League. And um, some of my staff are, are here, uh, and certainly I give them the praise for they have really been there through this entire project. Uh, certainly thank them. Uh, thank uh, Ray Tampa, who is our communications director, and uh, my engineers, uh, Malcolm Flakes, who is our engineer, who is going to help guide us through the, this project. We stood ready for this to happen and have been working endlessly uh, to make this happen. This is going to be real. This is not some play game. This is not some fluff. This is a real project that's going to happen because if I'm involved in it, it's going to happen. Uh, and I'll make sure that it happens. And my staff will make sure that it happens. Uh, we're 44 years old this, year, uh, this week. 
And so we have a history. We have a 104-year history with the National Urban League. So this community won't be left without some guiding hands on this project for the next 20 years. And so I thank you all for coming. I certainly thank Alex and Midtown and, and, uh, and all the group, uh, Balin, uh, who have deemed, uh, have been constant with us. If we needed a meeting, we got a meeting. If we needed agreement on something, we got an agreement. And uh, I appreciate that coming from somebody who came into town and said we, with all sincerity, want to make this happen. But it would not have happened had it not been for the mayor and Kanika lending their support to this project and making it happen. And certainly we have to thank uh, Nikki Capehart uh, for all of the work that she's done working at City Hall after the mayor stole it from me. Uh, <laughs> But I'm, uh, I'm appreciative. Uh, we are ready to go. Uh, we've uh, ordered the trailers to come and start dig. Oh, no, not yet. Uh, but we're ready to go. And we, we just thank everybody for their involvement in this project. Thanks to the community for standing behind us as an urban league and saying, you keep pushing the button and we'll keep pushing you. And we expect the community to do that. And we expect to reach out to the other groups that have not been selected in this project and say, come sit down to the table. Let's see how we can keep you involved and get you involved in this project. We thank this committee, Bloomberg committee, and the, the committee that really came up with these uh, ideas, and we're ready to go. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. So look, I'm, I'm fully aware of the time I have left in office. It's 35 days something like, uh, I think, 840 hours from now or something. <laughs> but it was important that I make this decision, not in the heat of a mayoral contest where it could be unnecessarily politicized, thereby trivializing the importance of the, of the decision, but when all the facts were in, including learning who the next mayor would be. And I am comforted by the conversations I've had with Mayor-elect Welch. He gets it. He knows we can't start this process over, and I expect him to join me and Alex soon as we chart out our next steps, including the creation of a term sheet and ultimately a development agreement. Now this project, the re redevelopment of the site, it's a generational project. It will transcend administrations. I may be the first mayor to hand this off, but I won't be the last. And I trust that City Hall including the next mayor and future mayors and future city council members, working in partnership with the community and Midtown Development, will continue to move this process forward. Remember, this is not a mayoral project. This is a St. Petersburg project. It is the biggest and most important one yet. And with that, we'll take your questions. Thank you all. Sure. Yeah, the, this, the city and the Rays, uh, along with our partners with Pinellas County, uh, have had ongoing conversations uh, with the Tampa Bay Rays over the last several months. Uh, as you all know, we hired a uh, consultant uh, that works on stadiums, uh, and they've been uh, involved in all of our discussions that we've had with the team, and we're continuing to meet with them. Um, I, I, I think there's a real opportunity here uh, in that we now have uh, a developer selected for us to be able to bring the Rays in uh, and really ha talk some serious numbers with the team. Uh, knowing who that developer is, I think, actually helps make it easier if we're going to be able to put a deal together to do so. So I'm, I continue to be optimistic about that. Uh, as far as the mayor-elect, um, who has been a friend for more than 20 years, we've had multiple conversations, as you might expect, re related to the Tropicana field site. What was important to me um, was knowing first and foremost that uh, he felt that this was his, has been a good process and that he had no intention when he gets sworn in of starting the process over and issuing a new RFP. 
Um, and secondly, that uh, is he, he has said to me that you are the mayor. I'm not the mayor yet. Uh, and as the mayor, it is within your authority and purview to make a selection. And I will honor that. Uh, but I also um, will have to vet myself, uh, this, this group, and make sure I'm comfortable with them. Just like with any RFP, um, we, pick, we pick someone, we start working on seeing if we can put a deal together. If you can, then you bring that to council. If you can't, then you move to the, to the next one. But we have great confidence that um, we're going to be able to put something together. But that will actually be the next phase. This is kind of like a, a multiple phase project when you think about it. That will involve multiple mayors over multiple years. The first phase was started in 2015 with a master plan for the site behind me. Uh, and then all the meetings with the community and gathering all the information and getting to a point where I could make a selection. And now it's my time to hand that off to the mayor elect and he'll take the next phase, which is to, uh, if he approves of this group, to work on a development agreement and the terms that can be brought to council. Uh, and then starting the process. Uh, and it's a development that's going to take certainly more than eight years, so he'll end up handing it off to the mayor that follows after him. Mayor, yes, ma'am. Well, City Council's role in this is to approve uh, a development agreement. We're nowhere near that point. Um, we are really just starting the new phase, which is to start having discussions about what first a term sheet would look like, and then once you get that agreed to, then you start working on a development agreement. And then that gets brought to Council, and Council will certainly be, uh, their input will be sought out, and, and has been sought out as far as what they believe about the, the redevelopment of the site, what they'd like to see, and that will continue. So there's been a study under uh, underway uh, uh, related to the potential to, to peel back part of uh, 175 or all of it. Um, we're still waiting to get the results of that study. I think that will help inform um, probably the next administration um, because that will be a decision that, that that administration will need to make as to whether uh, that makes sense uh, for the community um, and is best for the city. Um, so we're still early in that process and no decisions have been made. The, the, on the bright side, though, is if the decision is made to, that that's what's best for the community and for the city, uh, we have a, a Secretary of Transportation and Secretary Buttigieg, who's a former mayor himself, uh, who understands the impact that highways have had on communities, and in particular communities of color, and how they have um, destroyed and separated uh, communities, and how if you potentially uh, can remove them, how you can sew that community back together. Thank you. Mayor, have you notified Yes, they have been notified. Yeah, and, and without getting into too many of the details of, of our discussions, because we've agreed that what we say in the room remains confidential, I'll, I'll kind of reiterate what I've said previously, which is, you know, I, I've, I've always been a bit skeptical uh, about the split season and more so from a process standpoint, how do you make that work? Um, and what I've told the team is, and I've said publicly, is if they can figure out how to make it work, uh, I'm not opposed to it, but I also wouldn't utilize general revenue dollars or increased taxes in order to pay for the stadium. There are things that the city certainly will be able to contribute toward um, the Rays staying on the site, but the actual cost of the construction, uh, if it's a split season, would not be one of them. But those, those talks will continue. Certainly, I hope they will. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get back with you on that one. Well, you know, I, I think in in uh, Alan's probably uh, my expert as far as uh, how negotiations on term sheets and development agreements go. But Alan, if I say something wrong, you correct me, please. Uh, but but I'm you know I, I, I my guess is you know you're anywhere from 
six months to a year before you get to a point. I mean, this is, look, this is a big project. Uh, it's a very complicated project. And the uh, requirements that we put in the RFP were really uh, audacious. I, I don't know of any other city that has asked as much from a developer as we have. And these guys stepped up and they said, you know what, you're asking for it. We think it's right too. We're going to do it. Um, but all of that's going to take time to negotiate through and put down into, into paper into an agreement that can then be brought to city council for their approval. So um, that's probably about right. Yeah, certainly that that's you know we've we've looked at every pro piece of property the city owns as as a potential opportunity for to accomplish some of the goals that we have, whether it's uh, constructing office which we need uh, or housing that's affordable which we also need. Uh, and I think you're going to see all that here on this site, um, given that it's a city-owned property and there's a collective bargaining agreement or not collective bargaining agreement the CBA, um, but also what they've already agreed to, um, and so. I, I fully expect we're going to see a mix of uses that does include uh, housing at different levels of affordability. And that's part of when we talk about for all, uh, from all. But the for all is, you know, recognizing that when you say affordable housing, you're not just talking about, you know, 60% and below. You're talking about a variety of different levels for, 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 for those uh, in, who are low, low income to low income to workforce to family housing. I think you're going to see all of that on this, on this site. Well, we've already, in, over the last five years or six years since we started in 2015, we have had countless outreaches to the community. And, and quite frankly, that's going to continue. I mean, look, when you're, when you're talking about a project that potentially you're looking at 20 years, the landscape changes as to needs and desires of the community and the business community, the, the community as a whole. And so, you know, what, what developers know, and, and I don't mean to put words in their mouth, but on projects that take this long, th there's got to be some sense of flexibility of what you Right. Yeah. Well, obviously, this, this 86 acres is very important. It is, as you uh, pointed out, it is not in our charter uh, that uh, any redevelopment on the site has to go to a referendum. Um, you know, we, we have gone through a long and vigorous process to get to this point with much community input, and there will be continued community input as we go. But everything that, uh, that we want to do is all about moving forward. But look, you know, we talk about affordable housing and the shortage of that, of affordable housing. The longer we delay in getting started, the longer we delay in having units that are available to the community to be able to rent or own. The longer we delay in getting started, the longer the delay in creating jobs and opportunity, whether they're construction jobs or permanent jobs. And there are, those, are, those are in the thousands, those numbers, that will be needed to build the site and then once it's completed, uh, to work in the places that exist on there. And so, you know, as, as Dr. King said, and, it, and, and it probably not exactly in these words, but justice delayed is justice denied. And we cannot delay this project from moving forward any longer. This community has been asked to wait for a long time for those promises that were made and not kept. And I'm not about to make them wait any longer. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you